A while ago, here on the channel, I made a couple of videos about beef jerky, both about the philosophy of beef jerky and sort of taking responsibility for the quality and safety of your own food, particularly meat, and also a little bit about the science of beef jerky, why it is that you cannot cook meat and still have it be safe. You may remember from that video that there's actually more than one way to inhibit bacterial growth on your meat, or really on any food. One way, for example, is to put it in the refrigerator to subject it to cold temperatures to inhibit the bacterial growth. Another thing you can do is to heat it up to high temperatures and kill all the bacteria. And of course, there's what you do with beef jerky, which is to gradually dehydrate it, suck all the moisture out and deprive the bacteria of the water that it needs to live and grow. So I got to thinking, what else could we do to preserve meat? What other ways are there to make it so that the giant buffalo that you kill uh, can last more than 24 hours? So this is a pork leg, and what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to turn this pork leg into prosciutto. Now, if you've never had prosciutto, I highly recommend you go find your nearest deli and try a little bit of prosciutto. It's expensive, so I don't have it very often, but it's really an experience worth having. I like to think of it as bacon's bacon, sort of as next level bacon. Bacon for people who have already had bacon and are ready for something more. Or conversely, you could say that bacon is just meat for people who haven't had prosciutto yet. So the process for turning this raw pork leg into a delicious chunk of prosciutto is called curing. And if you're wondering, well, Joseph, what are you curing it of? Well, the main thing I'm curing this pork leg of is not being prosciutto. I'm curing it of being a pork leg. I'm curing it of not being as delicious as it really could be. Okay, so what does the curing process look like? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of preparation. I'm going to trim off the fat. I'm going to season it a little bit. But the real magic is going to come when I put it here in this cooler. I'm going to lay down a layer of salt on the bottom of this cooler and then absolutely bathe this thing in salt. I'm going to bury it in salt completely. After about 30 days of that, I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to season it some more and then I'm going to hang it up in a cool place, in this case in the corner of my garage, and I'm going to hang it there for about six months. And in six months, I will have delicious prosciutto, hopefully. So what is it about this process that makes it so that it can preserve the meat? Why can I hang this chunk of raw meat out in the garage for six months and have it not kill me? Well, the main answer is the salt. Remember how with beef jerky, you're gradually drawing the moisture off with the hot air blown by the fan of the dehydrator. This is going to work kind of like that, except instead of gradually drawing moisture off, it's going to rip the moisture out with salt via osmosis. So this thing is going to be buried in salt, and the salt is going to rip the moisture out of the pork, and it's also going to rip the moisture out of the bacteria and kill the bacteria. Pretty cool, huh? There's also a secret ingredient in all of this, which is prog powder. So what is prog powder? Well, prog powder is mostly just ordinary table salt, but it has a small mixture included of sodium nitrite and sometimes sodium nitrate. So what does the sodium nitrite do? It turns out that the table salt will kill all the bacteria in here except for one, and that is Clostridium botulinum. And that's a bit of a problem because that's the bacteria that causes botulism. So if you don't want botulism, you can't just bury it in table salt. Now the way this was got around in olden days is actually when people harvested salt, it would naturally have impurities in it. And the saltpeter that was naturally in the salt had nitrites in it, and the nitrites happened to kill the Clostridium botulinum. And so there you go, no more, no, no botulism. This is actually one of those interesting cases where you have a process that is technologically advanced, right? We can refine table salt into pure sodium chloride. And it turns out that that's actually worse for curing meat. The older, kind of lower grade, less efficient, less precise, less refined process actually had advantages. So I don't have any salt, Peter, so what you use nowadays is prog powder. And as I said, the prog powder is a mixture of table salt plus sodium nitrite. There's actually two blends of prog powder. It's prog powder one and prog powder two. Prog powder two, which is what this one is, also has sodium nitrate in addition to the sodium nitrite. The sodium nitrate uh, breaks down over time into more sodium nitrate, so it's better for long-term cures like this that are gonna happen over the course of several months. Think of the sodium nitrate as a slow release anti-botulism bomb. So without further ado, let us jump in and prepare this pork leg to be cured of its non-prosciutto status. Oh, that doesn't smell good. It smells exactly like what you'd expect a pig to smell like. What have I done? You have bought 20 pounds of pork. Oh my gosh, this smells so bad. A little piggy. Oh my gosh.
Okay, so it's been 30 days. This has been sitting in salt for 30 days, and I'm simultaneously excited and terrified. Excited because, hey, I'm making prosciutto, and terrified because this thing sat outside on my back porch for a month, and I'm about to hang it up for six more months. So if you've ever wondered what a chunk of meat looks like after you dry pack it in salt for a month, we're gonna find that out right now. Okay, so some of that salt is actually slightly damp. I don't know if that's from precipitation, you know, uh, moisture in the air that's kind of seeped in here, or what I actually kind of suspect is that that is ham juices that have made it, well, out of the pork leg and have made it into the salt. Okay, and there we have it. So it has, there's the top of the pork leg. It has this weird, like, super leathery hard texture. Like, it doesn't feel like raw meat. Instead, it feels like beef jerky, kind of. Okay. Well, look at that. That's kind of cool. Wow. Wow. It's like, it's, it's a dried up pork leg. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Okay, so that's literally as hard as beef jerky. There is nothing that feels raw about that. It's just a little softer on the bottom. I can't tell if that's because of the higher fat in that area, or if that's because it didn't suck out the salt, excuse me, if the salt didn't suck out the moisture as well underneath. That's a possibility too. The next step is going to be to spice it, to cover it in a mixture of garlic and pepper. Incidentally, while doing just a little bit of cursory internet research for this video, uh, I ran across the claim repeatedly that uh, black pepper back in the days of the spice road or in the Middle Ages was uh, worth its weight in gold. And as far as I can tell, that might have actually been true. I do know that as part of the lead up to the Visigoths sacking Rome in 410 AD, the Visigoths actually besieged Rome and were persuaded to go away. And part of what persuaded them to go away was that the Romans offered them 3,000 pounds of black pepper. So if anyone is ever annoying you, just offer them some black pepper and maybe they'll go away. The final step is to put the pork leg in a cloth bag. The cloth bag is going to protect it from insects, but also allow it to breathe and dry more. And finally, I'll use the remainder of the spices to help pack it in, because why the heck not? I'm going to hang it on a convenient hook in the corner of the garage. The important thing as far as finding a place of where to hang it is that it ought to be dry, it ought to be well ventilated, and you need to hang it in a way that rodents are unlikely to be able to get to it. And there you have it, a raw pork leg, dry cured in salt for a month, hanging for the next six months in my garage. And come August, I'm going to have some delicious, delicious prosciutto.